Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Andrea Hill, and I'm the Outreach Librarian at the Riverhead Free Library. Welcome and thank you for coming to How to Start a Home-Based Business, a program presented to you by the Stony Brook Small Business Development Center. Uh, I'll now turn it over to Gifty, and we can get started. Thank you, Andrea. My name is Gifty Ostrander from the Stony Brook Small Business Development Center. Thank you for taking the time to join us today for the presentation on how to start a home-based business. I am here with my colleague, Leslie Rarup from the Stony Brook Small Business Development Center. So we will begin our presentation. So um, we are from the New York State Small Business Development Center. We are at Stony Brook University, and that is our contact number and our website information. So who are we? We funded by the SBA and the State University of New York. So SBA and SUNY, and what do we do? We offer support services to small businesses. We also offer referrals to consultants and service providers. And as we're doing today, we also offer workshops and seminars on business education. So if you have any needs for business counseling, definitely we are available to assist you. So we'll get into a home-based business. What's the definition of a home-based business? It's a business whose primary office is in the owner's home. So the business can be any size or any type, as long as the office itself is located in the home. So your primary business location is in your home. That qualifies you as a home-based business. This uh, definition was taken from the Small Business Encyclopedia. Now it says 50% of US businesses are considered home-based. So there are currently about 31.7 million businesses, small businesses, which form about 99.9% .9 of all businesses here in the U.S., and 15 million of those are home-based. So home-based businesses is not a new concept. It's nothing new. It's been around. A lot of people are engaged in home-based businesses. So are you thinking of starting one? If you are, let's explore. Let's see what we have, what we need to be aware of, and uh, how to get started. So these are the statistics. This was 2018, but I checked as we came. Right now it's 31.7, 15 million of those are small uh, businesses based, home-based businesses. So we have some interesting facts here. Most businesses, all these big businesses we see, most of them started out of a garage or a basement, a spare bedroom. They didn't just start big, they started small from home. We have an example here. We have Apple Computer, even Amazon, Google, Walt Disney World, and the list goes on and on. We have HP, we have all these other businesses also that started from a garage many, many years ago. So two out of three companies of all sizes start from home. So that's a very interesting fact that we need to be aware of. So what are we going to do today? Our agenda today is to uh, discuss business ideas, market research, how to plan your business, how to access capital, business registrations, marketing sales, local support. We're gonna talk about a number of things that would help us to get started. So that's the agenda for today. So why work from home? It's attractive because you have flexible hours. You can work at any time you want. You don't have to go in at nine and leave at five. So you have flexible hours. You don't have to commute. The business is right there. You don't have to look for office space or rent, uh, you know, an office. So it looks attractive to do that. There are certain tax advantages, right? We have home deductions when you file taxes. 
So that is also an attractive uh, item for people when they're considering why work from home. You can arrange your schedule around your family's needs and spend more time with your family. You can work at night. This, there's so much flexibility. But once again, we've got to look at the other side of the coin. It's not for everyone. You have to be really disciplined if you want to engage in a home-based business. Some people are used to being around people. So there's this feeling of isolation and lack of contact with people. And it's, for some people, it's a problem because they, they want to be around people. Also, there could be increased family stress, right? It's hard to separate home life from business life. For some people, that is an issue. You have to minimize distractions. You have to be able to, you know, dedicate a certain number of hours doing the business. So it requires self-discipline. You have to be able to plan and manage your time effectively Otherwise, you will not achieve much. So we have the pros and cons of starting a home-based business. There are many things you have to consider, many, many things you have to consider. So are you prepared to work long hours? It's business, you're running a business from home, but definitely it requires a good amount of time, especially in the beginning. You've got to put in a lot of effort. Does your family support your decision to start a new business, right? You need their support, you need their cooperation. You have to be able to um, separate your business life from home life. Now, how will your personal or family life be affected, right? They need your attention at the same time your business needs your attention. So you have to be able to balance the two. Do you have any kind of formal a business training, right? What is your background? How do you have any kind of uh, training in managing a business or uh, keeping records or any type of business training? So that is also an important uh, factor to consider. Have you thoroughly explored why you want to start your business, your own business, and what are the reasons? right? They've got to be genuine, solid reasons. And are you willing to make the necessary sacrifices? So normally you'd have to think of that your talent. Do you have any talent? Can it be translated into a business idea? So for example, if you like to sew, right? That could be an area that you'd want to consider to start making um, items, apparel, or, or any kind of uh, items that require sewing. So you've got to figure out what your talent is and if it can be translated into uh, a business idea. We have some business ideas here, but it's there is much, much more uh, there. But these are some of the common uh, business ideas that people uh, have engaged in when starting their small business from home. So freelance is number one. You can freelance anything, right? Tax advisors, tax preparers, bookkeeping, accounting, just writing. A lot of people do writing for people. So that's freelance, you can blogging, graphic designers, translation services. Services definitely it's a, a good place to start. It doesn't require much startup capital, right? It's all about um, your skill, labor, and may not need in, you know, quite a lot of uh, funding. You also have to evaluate creative skills and monetize. So like I said, if you're good with arts and crafts, maybe that's something you should consider. If you're good with selling items online, Definitely, it's an area that most people, actually, a lot of people have gotten into e-commerce right now. So we also have professional organizers, right? 
bridal consultants, travel agents, business coaching, event planners, and the list goes on and on and on. Childcare, babysitting, pet services, personal fitness, editorial services, and a whole lot more. We have landscaping, virtual assistant is also another area that is sort of gaining momentum right now. We have a lot of inquiries regarding virtual assistance. So we have to think of doing some kind of market research. When we have an idea, we, we, we figured out what we want to do. We definitely need to do some research first. We don't just want to jump into it. We want to make sure that the idea is a feasible one, that it can actually create enough uh, returns for us. So the market research definitely would be to consider if there is a need for your product or service, right? The fact that you could do something and sell doesn't mean it will do well. You have to make sure that there is a need for that particular product or service. So if you're offering uh, to sell um, your arts and crafts, find out what is needed. Are people into that? Do some market research. What are the market trends? Who is buying? What your target market is? What the competition is like? So there are many things to consider. Who needs it and at what price? Very, very important. What is the market size, right? How will my business fit into the market? Is it very competitive? Why should people come to you, right? What are you offering that is different from the next person? So these are some of the things that you have to consider when you are uh, planning on the type of product or service that you want to provide. Also, another thing to do possibly would be to test your idea, right? So if you have uh, a group of uh, people close to you, you want to test your product or your service and get feedback from them, right? And see if it's um, positive. So that's another way. You could give out free samples <laughs> just so you can get an idea of what the feedback is before you invest quite a bit of money into it. But market research is the main idea here to find out the feasibility of your product. So there are other things we need to consider as well when we are planning and preparing for our home-based business. We have to think about zoning and other restrictions. So uh, you have to find out uh, what zone your home is in, right? It's because we need to comply with local zoning ordinances. What commercial activities are allowed in your neighborhood? So we've got to make sure we are in line with what the town or the, um, the village uh, requires. So we can find out from them, I want to start this like an accounting service or any kind of business, arts and craft, um, normally, if it's not going to create a lot of buzz, people coming in and out, it should be okay. The main concern is noise and traffic, right? Your neighbors might not be happy if they see a whole line of cars packed early in the morning, making noise and causing all that uh, uh, fuss. So we have to make sure that um, this is in compliance with... Uh, zoning requirements. Also, there could be uh, certain limitations that we need to think about, right? The number of employees. So if you have a home-based business, you can have 20, 30, 40 people showing up at your house, right? So there might be some limitations. Also, signs is also another issue. You may not be allowed to put up signs in a residential area. You have to find out from uh, whoever is in charge of your area to see if it's okay to do certain things. They might require handicap parking, especially depending on the type of business, if you're dealing with disabled people and things like that. We have to make sure that we have every requirement uh, taken care of. And also if you live in like a homeowner's uh, 
you know, area, right? They have homeowners association. If you live in a complex or in a condo, we, they also have their own uh, CCR. So there are covenant codes and restrictions. We have to make sure we comply with those, right? If you're not a standalone home, but you are in uh, a condo or a, an area which has a homeowners association, you have to make sure we are complying with what uh, they want uh, you to do. So as I said before, the biggest concerns are noise and traffic. So after we take care of the zoning requirements, we figured out our business idea, we win the, the right zone, we can go ahead and do what we need to do. Then we have to think of writing a business plan. Now, um, a business plan definitely is important, right? Because it's like a roadmap for your business. You wanna outline all the steps that you need to take put it down on paper and make sure that all your operations, right, are listed out. We have the executive summary, which uh, would be a summary of all the topics that would be under the business plan. You describe your business in detail, the history and what specifically you're producing or the services you're providing, right? And then we talk about the market plan. How are you going to reach your target market? What marketing strategies are you going to use? What is your sales plan? How do you get your product from you to the consumer? Basically, that's what we need to work out. What is your business model? Is it just going to be online? Are you going to have people coming in or what are you planning to do? So you need a comprehensive market plan and work out all the details there. Management and operations as well. Who's going to manage the business? How long are you going to be operating? What, 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 what are you planning to do? You need to put it down on paper, make sure it's feasible. And the most important thing also is the financial analysis and projections, right? We need to project what we think the business can bring in, what we think will go out, right? So your profit and loss statement, for example, what profits and what expenses, you need to map everything out, make sure it's a feasible plan. So a business plan is very important because you're doing quite a bit of research, you understand the industry in which you're operating, and you well prepared. It also can be used for a financing proposal to a lender, right? So if you have some, uh, most people need funding, right? Not everyone is well pre, you know, equipped with, with, with finances and may need uh, funding. So a business plan would be one of the things you would need, especially if it's a new business. And if you're starting a home-based business, it's new, it requires additional capital that you don't have, a business plan becomes very handy. If you're seeking partners, right, definitely they want to see what kind of plan you have and things like that. So a business plan is very useful. It's a roadmap that takes you from point A to point B. What are your milestones and things like that? What are the key metrics? What are you planning? You have to write it down. I know a lot of people, oh, I have it all in my mind. I'm all set, but that won't do it. <laughs> the more you write, the more you realize there's a lot more that you didn't think of, right? So this helps you through the process. It's like a, a GPS, let's put it that way. So you have to think of your startup costs. Certain businesses don't need much money, right? If you are just going to write for people, so not much funding is needed. But if, say, you want to uh, engage in uh, selling on Amazon, right? You need inventory. You need a whole bunch of things. Definitely, you need startup capital. And if you don't have it, uh, so we need to prepare. What are my startup costs? Make sure you have 
operating capital as well, six to 12 months it says, but um, some kind of operating capital because you don't want to be stranded. You don't want to send things out, don't have money to, uh, you know, fill your inventory. You can't uh, send things out when people order because you don't have enough, right? So that could create problems. So make sure you have enough for your startup costs. And then the financial uh, statements we talked about in the business plan, these are the three financial statements. We would need a balance sheet, an income statement, and a cash flow statement. Uh, definitely very useful because it tells you where your business will be from month to month, well, depending on what you're projecting, right? So also a break-even analysis it will tell you when to expect a profit. You're not going to expect a profit day one, right? You may have to sell for quite a bit to balance it out. You have all these um, expenses, right, that you got to take care of. So you need to find out when you actually break even and start making profit. So these are some of the metrics to consider. Okay, so... It's very important to establish business credit because if you're a new business, right, it's very hard to get credit, very hard to get capital. Most new businesses have to bootstrap, right, or ask friends and family and things like that. So it's good to establish business credit because if you're a new business, the weight would be on your personal credit because you don't have any history to show a lender, right? So it's good to establish business credit, both personal and business credit are important. So the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, it's a good place to start for people with limited credit histories, right? They could give you tips on what to do. This is a, a good uh, resource and we've, we could provide you with contact information for that. The Federal Trade Commission also has recommendations for improving credit. So if you feel your credit is lacking, you want to improve it, these are some of the government agencies that have material uh, for you to look at. And it's also important to apply for business credit. So if you're a new business, the, the best way, or one of the ways, right, is done in Bradstreet. So you get a Dun & Bradstreet number. It's a unique nine digit identification number for each fiscal location of your business. So it gives you um, guidance on how to establish business credit and it's a good way to uh, start getting some kind of recognition. If you have a business credit, uh, it helps you if you want to engage with partners or even suppliers, right? They want to see your business credit and that plays an important part. If you want to engage in federal brands, for example, they want to know if you have a Dun & Bradstreet number because then you, you, you have to actually then register at that point. So it's good to have it already established that business credit. Right. If you pay on time and things like that, it all gets reported in Dun and Bradstreet and it improves your business credit. If so they, may I ask to... a question? Sure. Okay. Uh, ba back to the previous slide when you said the Dun and Bradstreet number is for each physical location, location. for right. your business. Okay. So if I'm running this business out of my home, say I want to be a virtual assistant and I'm running it out of my home. So you're telling me I cannot use a post office box so that I do not have people coming to my home. How does that work? Well, it says fiscal location. So we'll have to ask down in Bruce Street. <laughs> it goes by the physical location. I'm not sure about the PO boxes. We'll have to find out from them because they, they need to identify your location and say, this is where you are. They, they have a way to verify and it goes by location. So we are, we'll have to find out 
if they do accept PO boxes or not. Yeah. Yeah. Because I don't want people but, coming to my home. I'm your correct. virtual assistant. You don't need right. to see me. No, people don't have to come to your home, but how is your business registered, right? Is your business registered? And, and normally it would have to be a physical location, right? How is your business registered with the state or with the county? They want to know where you are. So I think they just go by the business registration and they verify that as well too. So, but uh, people don't have to come to your home, right? But if your business is registered as a, right with a physical location, that's what Dun & Bradstreet is going to use. It's just to create a nine digit number for you so that they can uh, record all your transactions and if you pay on time, things like that. So regardless of how you actually choose to do business, but your business should have an address, a physical address. Okay. So access to capital, right? Like I said, if you're a new business, it may be difficult. So we start from the bottom here, bootstrapping, family and friends, you want to borrow, see if anyone will lend you some money, right, from within. And um, if that doesn't work, you need, because the traditional methods of getting funding may be difficult unless you have a very solid uh, business plan and uh, the bank is interested in doing startup. So some other methods, we have SBA guaranteed loans, right? Or a bank loan, uh, non-bank lenders, right? Lots of non-bank lenders. Business lines of credit. Business credit card is very, very important. If you have business credit card, and then that could help you also establish, uh, you know, some kind of credit history as well. We have microloans. Right, the SBA has a SBA microloan program. We have peer to peer lending and so a whole array of uh, sources of capital. So, what do we need to consider? Right, of course, a lot of uh, loan applications uh, denied mainly due to poor credit, right? They, they have a threshold that you need to meet. So we got to figure out what our credit score is, build our credit so that we have a better chance to access capital. So the condition of your business and personal credit is very important. It reflects your ability to repay debts. So credit scores can range from 300 to 850. You're gonna figure out where you stand and um, normally, uh, I don't want to give a credit uh, score because every bank operates differently, but you know what a good a poor score is and what a good score is, right? This is the range. So some things to consider. Why do you want to borrow the money? You need to know exactly why. You need to have some numbers worked out, right? What is the cost of borrowing? So we, before we listed all these different forms of uh, capital, peer-to-peer -peer lending and uh, online lenders, what is the cost of borrowing that money, right? Because we need to be able to estimate the interest rate. They have origination fees to certain people and uh, the repayment terms and all that. We got to consider a whole lot of things if we are thinking of borrowing the money. Is the cost of borrowing worth it, right? Can the business afford the loan? What are the monthly payments going to be? And things like that. And definitely, if you do have a business plan, it will all be uh, detailed in there and you have a good idea of what your borrowing power may be, right? So what documents do I need? And this is in general, not for a home-based business, because if you have a home-based business, there is no lease, right? <laughs> You're in your home. But um, definitely for existing businesses, they want business tax returns. If it's a new business, definitely personal tax returns play a big role. Do you have any 
business debts. So if it's a new business, definitely a business plan will be required. If it's not, it may not be required. We have uh, what your background could be, your resume, if you have any, uh, any positive um, information that would be useful to the lender, you need to provide that. Are you registered, right? Is your business registered? Um, some banks would require a proof of collateral and things like that. Do you have all the required business licenses, permits, and things like that? So these are some of the documents you need to have ready for your business if you're needing some kind of um, loan. So we have to think of uh, registering our business, right? So these are the, the main types of business structures. We have sole proprietorship, right? <laughs> So that's the simple uh, business certificate. For us here in Suffolk County, we go to the Riverhead County Clerk's Office. It's very simple registration. You go there with your ID business name. And if the business name is available, you get issued with a, a business certificate. $35, I believe. Um, not sure if the price is still the same, but um, the last time I had it, that was the fee. Um, so it has pros and cons, right? So if it's a sole proprietor, it's, an, a, a, it's easy to form, right? And there are no formalities. You're not required to file any uh, you know, paperwork to the county or anything like that besides your initial registration. Um, but it has certain disadvantages because there's no separation between you and the business. You and the business are one and the same. And that means your liabilities are unlimited, right? All the business debts and all the business profits is linked to you. So should there be any issues with the business, you get directly uh, involved. So the liabilities are unlimited. There's no limit. There's no separation. So your home your assets in general are tied to the business. So it may not be such a great idea. You wanna separate uh, yourself from the actual business. So the business is, is, is an entity on its own. All right, so we have partnership, <coughs> excuse me. So for partnership, it's just having more than one business owner, right? Could be two or more. So that would be general partnership, right? We're talking about simple, partnership. So if it's more than one person, everybody then gets uh, liable, right, for any uh, debts. So it's like spreading the, uh, the debt. And it's not only you, if you do have a partner, everybody is responsible. This is for general simple partnership. Okay. But once again, there's no separation. Everybody is liable as well. So these two can be done at the county clerk's office on the local level. And then we have uh, corporations and LLCs, which you have to do with the state, right? So they cost a bit more money, but it serves the purpose. It gives you that separation, right? So the, the business stands on its own. When it comes to LLCs, you get the articles of organization. It's a simpler uh, structure. It doesn't have shares. The owners are called members. Now, if you incorporate, then yes, you do have shares. But that costs much, much more. And uh, you, there are certain filing requirements that you would have to meet. And uh, you would probably need some form of legal assistance or guidance here on how to uh, go about filing and things like that. So these are the different forms of uh, business structures. I mean, because of the time factor, we can go into too much detail, but that is the general idea, separation or not, basically. <laughs> Excuse me. 
So when, after you register your business, you also have to figure out, <coughs> excuse me, if you need other licenses or permits. So depending on the kind of business you're dealing with, you may need additional permits or licenses, right? <coughs> Excuse me. We have a sales tax authorization. So if you, your business that you, you know, operating requires you to collect sales tax, then you need to be authorized to collect sales tax. So you need to file for a certificate of authorization to collect the sales tax. If you're dealing with the food industry, for example, there are so many permits and things like that that you need to be aware of. And uh, most construction businesses need to have certain permits and things like that. So professional entry licenses, depending on the kind of business, also may be required. So these are, you have to make sure that you have all your permits in place, even if it's a home-based business. <clears throat> all right, so uh, you get your EIN number, right? Employment identification number, employee identification number. So why do we need that? Uh, it's most banks would only open a business bank account for you if you are registered and have the EIN number, right? But it is, you, you will need it if you're employing people, definitely. So if you want to open a business bank account, if you want to file taxes and you're not a sole proprietor, if you're a sole proprietor, you're not hiring anyone, you're using your own name, you could just use a social security number. But most people, uh, and it's free to get also from the IRS. So would like to get that EIA number and have a, a unique number attached to their business, open a business bank account, and then uh, get a business credit card to establish some kind of um, credit. Insurance is also a very important aspect, right? If nothing at all, general liability insurance, we need that. So depending on the type of business, once again, if you have a business where you're storing a lot of inventory, maybe you need to figure out if you need fire or accident or something, it depends on what type of business, but definitely general liability, professional liability, if you're doing taxes, right? Or bookkeeping or anything like that, um, you probably may wanna consider professional liability. We also have fire, accident, and theft insurance. <clears throat> so if we consider all these things, we're ready to set up our office at our home. You need to you know, get a dedicated space for your business. Should I stop and ask questions, Leslie? I see there are some. <laughs> well, let me see. I don't see any questions. I see a oh, comments. Oh, okay. Yes. Perfect. All right. No problem. We'll go on. So set yourself up for success. Find your space in your home. Dedicate a specific area of your home to do this business. Have your furniture, desk, chair, cabinet. Set it up as an office, right? Don't be in the hallway, everybody coming and going, getting distraction, distracted and things like that. If you can find a specific spot, even if it's a dedicated area, it doesn't have to be a specific room, but a dedicated spot, as long as you have that area to set up. Obviously, get connected. We need a computer or a laptop in this day and age. You can do anything without having internet. Have a dedicated voicemail, right, for the business. Make sure you have a line for the business and it's answered professionally. Printer, fax, scan, copy, printing. You have the right internet speed because we know that everybody's doing video conferencing now, right? Lots of Zoom meetings. So much Zoom meetings, right? So make sure you're equipped for that. 
what software do you need, right? To, to maintain accounting and record keeping systems? Are you using QuickBooks or what software do you need? Make sure we do that. Set up your website and also engage in social media. There's just no way around it. Social media is really huge now. So if you're managing your business, like I said, accounting and bookkeeping, very, very important. You want us have a separate bank account. If possible, have a separate business credit card because come tax time, you would be able to, you know, have all your records sort of uh, kept organized. <coughs> Excuse me. Also, think about merchant services because most people now use credit cards. There's no doubt about that. <coughs> Sorry, coughing. We also have video conferencing, right? Make sure you have all these capabilities. An important factor also is filing and paying taxes. We can't get away from that. We got to figure out what our federal tax obligations are, even if it's a home-based business. What your state tax obligations are. When the tax year starts for you, are you using a calendar year or not? Or if you're using a fiscal year. So we have some of the general types of business taxes here. So we have income tax, self-employment tax, estimated tax, employer tax, and excise tax. If you want more details, you can connect with us and we can go over that. But these are the general types of business taxes you need to be aware of. <clears throat> so we have marketing and sales. Digital marketing, definitely very important. If you can offer online, right uh, access that that is great so online shopping is one of the most popular online activities worldwide and the covid uh, pandemic actually has expedited this shift right a lot more people are doing shopping online so if you can offer anything online even your services your website social media promote as much as you can online because People spend a lot of time searching online. <clears throat> Excuse me. So improve your online presence to maximize your exposure. Okay. Another way to do this is you can reach a broader audience by advertising online and using tools such as the SEO. So the SEO will help you get traffic from free organic and uh, natural search results if you're using all these keywords, right? So that is one thing to consider, but there are many ways you could use to, you know, get yourself visible in, in the search ranking. All right. Everybody knows about social media, Facebook, Twitter. We have uh, Google, Pinterest, we have Instagram and all that. So small businesses can post videos of satisfied customers on YouTube, tag them with searchable keywords and link their videos to their business websites. There's a lot you could do on um, social media. And we actually do have a really good social media marketing a book that we could send out if needed. We could post company events, if you have new product lines, if you have special offers, any promotions, you could do all that, right? So people get more uh, inf information, more content about your business and what you can offer. So marketing on social media is quite important. So what are your marketing and sales goals? Common goals are to increase email subscribers, right? Grow your market share, and increase sales by a percentage. So you need to set a target and see how best you can reach that target and what you need to do to get there. So 
online advertising, newspaper ads, we have radio ads, TV ads, believe it or not, people still doing direct mail, email listing is really, really important as well. We have constant contact, right? That seemed to work quite well. That's just an example, but we do have email lists. People do email blasts. You can host an event, have word of mouth. There's nothing that beats word of mouth, right? And uh, definitely we have social media as well. So these are some of the marketing strategies that you can use. So definitely um, trying to finish within the time here uh, so we can leave some time for questions and answers. An entrepreneur is, this is how we describe it, someone who willingly works 20 hours a day so they don't have to work eight hours a day for someone else. Okay, it's not going to be easy. That's all we're trying to say. <laughs> it's not going to be a piece of cake, but the rewards are, you know, immeasurable if you do it right. Okay, that's why you need to have that um, discipline to spend hours creating your own business. So at the end of the day, you can have, a, you know, the rewards. So the local support, we have Small Business Development Center, right? We also have SCORE. We also are resource partners. We have the Veterans Business Outreach Center. We have the Women's Business Center. So these are all local uh, support um, resources that are provided if you need assistance, all right? <clears throat> So the SBDC, we offer free help and confidential assistance. Definitely, if you need help, that's a number right there. And uh, good luck. <laughs>